Okay, so here's what we got. And uh, it seemed a little smaller on the uh, photos that I got, so we'll see how this goes. Basically, we've got these in there, and I can see them. I don't know how well you guys can see them. I'm assuming you can. <clears throat> but I don't know how far down the tree they go. I'm going to need to cut some of this tree off if I'm going to load this thing, obviously. So I'm going to screen off that portion over there. There's a dead end down here. but I'm going to screen off that portion over there. And uh, poke around in this and see if there's bees down in this, if I can cut it off or not. And then I'm probably going to run out of batteries in my batteryized chainsaw. Because I'm right in the middle of town here, so I didn't want to make a whole lot of ruckus. We'll see how this goes. Okay, so this is kind of the exploratory phase. We're kind of trying to see. Well, this is a lot harder than I anticipated. Okay, so that actually works surprisingly well. I thought I was gonna run out of batteries, but of course not to brag, but that's like a 10 inch bar. And of course I had to cut from multiple sides and poke through the center and yeah, I'm pretty good with the chainsaw. Anyway, I think we're about through this thing and I haven't seen any bees or anything coming out, so this might be possible. We might be able to get this thing done. All right, we're making some progress. This is called a beekeeper's deadfall, by the way. Get under here. So we made an educated guess here. We got these branches and these knots and stuff. So I kind of guessed if I cut here, I wouldn't get too much of the colony. It looks like I made a pretty good guess. This looks like the top of their, of their hive. Okay, so in case we've got a viable colony here, we put a little bit of a temporary duct tape lid on there for them and we're going to try to get this thing in the truck. Originally I was going to try to transport it vertically but uh, I don't know if that's going to happen so now I'm going to try to just get it in the truck somehow. Maybe try to keep it orientated how it is. Hopefully they've got all that comb attached to the side pretty well like they did that comb that I pulled out. Maybe it won't be jostling them around too bad. They've already got the spilled honey and stuff on the bottom. Um, what is now the bottom as it's laying on the side here, so I'll try to put it in the truck maybe how it is and and then uh, I guess stand it up uh, When we get back to the to the house or leave it laying down. I don't know. I haven't haven't quite decided what's best yet, but uh, Hopefully when I lift that I end up over there a lot of that honey will maybe pour out this end over here and keep from just completely coating the bees and messing with them too bad. Luckily it's a pretty warm night tonight, so hopefully they will be okay. We'll see.
All that talk about laying it in, how it sits and all that was, yeah, that's not gonna happen either. This is the best I can do. We'll see if there's even bees in here, but I'm gonna back up to it and try to push it over in the truck. Okay, I'm running low on camera space, so we got seven minutes left in the car. So basically I'll explain what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna try to get a ratchet strap around this, cinch it as tight as I can to this truck, pick up that other end and push it on the truck. So I'm gonna do that real quick and I gotta keep shutting the camera on and off if I wanna record any of this. Hear them. So we got bees in here, so we're gonna hurry up and try to get them loaded. This uh, this probably isn't. Uh, Okay, there we have it. About 340 pounds. Of course, I got some 2x4s and stuff. 
strapped onto it, but either way, pretty heavy log. Set it back down. Okay, so we're gonna try to get the bees out of this fallen branch and put them into this Red Bull cooler. We've got our bee vac set up over here. We've got various protective equipment over there if we need it. And uh, we're just gonna get started. I've had to build this little uh, windscreen because it's kind of windy here in Oklahoma. We're gonna try to this. put this at the entrance so we can suck up a lot of these guard bees. There's different tricks you can do to kind of get the bees that'll sting you out of your way. You won't see those on TikTok, but basically we want to get all the guard bees kind of out of our out of our hair if we can. We're going to vacuum them up. You can spray them with sugar water or kind of do some other things to kind of keep them from flying and make it a little easier on you. But we're just kind of just, for now, we're just going to set this vacuum at the entrance so that as bees come and go, then maybe they'll, they'll kind of get trapped in there. I'm going to take the top off and kind of see what I can see in there. Take you guys to the there you go. Now you're on there with some, some duct tape. See we got bees coming and going here. I don't know you may be able to see them, you may not. My wife put out feed yesterday to kind of keep the other bees from coming over here while I was doing this. I was wanting to put like a full tent over this, but that's not gonna happen. trying to use this information to kind of see how we're going to cut into here. Obviously it's narrower up here at the top than it will be down there, but we're kind of trying to see how much wood we've got. I haven't gotten in yet. Oh. You ready for lunch or you want to keep working on this for a while? I'll keep working on this for a while. Okay. You trying to get inside? Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to see if I can come in from down here. What the heck is that? Oh, it's cardboard. Hmm. There's some, uh, some, uh, uh oh, is that beetle larva? Probably beetle larva. But look at that cardboard, there's a mouse or something. Well, look right there. here. Oh, there's a mouse actually in there. There's acorns right here in this, this side over here. There's literally a mouse right there. 
gonna go grab a cat. See him? Oh, I see him. I'm gonna go grab a cat. Yeah, uh, grab me my glove. She's kind of trying to run away. Oh, does she look? Look, I can sit out there. I don't know if you guys can tell what's what's going on in here, but I don't know if you can see see that larva that just fell there. That's why I had to get these bees out pretty soon because they're pretty vulnerable to uh, wax moths and hive beetles. So basically, when you're cutting into a tree like this. You can kind of feel, see this right here is the real new, you know, live wood right here. This gets a little softer and then this stuff in here is pretty gummy on the chainsaw. And so you kind of work to where you can kind of feel the chainsaw start to cut a little bit easier and then you stop and you just work your way up. You'll leave some fairly hard wood like this, but as long as you get most of it, you will be able to pry that out and get it loose. So. I'm going to uh, start getting in here and see if I can find this queen. Hopefully you guys can see how nasty that is in there. Gross. That's why we couldn't uh, just leave these bees in here till spring and deal with it then. So look at this mess here. It does not take long for these little boogers to go through here and just wreck a bunch of comb. See, when the when the branch fell, it smashed some of this comb up against each other, and then the bees can't get in there to pull larva out and you know guard their comb and do everything that they need to do. And that's how these little guys take over. Yuck! Look at that, just nasty. So, ugh. that's why we got to get them out of here. That'll spread across the hive. They, they, there's nothing that the bees can do about this. I don't know if you guys can see this, but we have eggs here in this comb. Now what that tells me, since this log has been sitting here at my house for more than three days, that tells me that before I started in here, you know, cutting this tree apart, we had a living queen, okay? Now, so if I don't find a queen, that means I lost her or killed her somehow. But if you'll notice here, I just pulled, you know, I just pulled a few pieces of comb with nice, clean, protected honey right here by the brood. We had nasty, slimed out stuff here. And look at what we got going on up top there. More larva crawling around, making a big old mess. 
So the bees are able to handle what they're on and what they're protecting, but if they've got places that they're, they're you know, they can't get to or don't have the numbers, or if it's the combs pushed together, then those, those, uh, those larvae will just take over. So we're gonna put this little bit of uh, brood uh, in the incubator real quick here. And I'm gonna keep looking for my queen. Okay, so I pulled that piece of comb off and then right behind, you can see here, they've, she's laid all that up too, but we've got larva kind of falling down and falling into it. I may be able to save it, but if it's got any bits of slime or whatever, I'm gonna just gonna have to discard it. See that beetle crawling out of there? I'm, I'm causing a lot of that by getting in here and making a mess, knocking things down, everything else, so. And I'll get back to it. See here, that's the problem. This piece of comb that's got eggs and brood on this side was smashed when the tree fell up against that other comb and the, the larvae are able to tunnel through and uh, get to even the areas that the bees are trying to protect. There's just nothing they can do when they've got areas that, that they can't get to like this. So that's kind of Again, I guess I've said this a million times, that's why we got to get in here and get this done, so. Maybe I'll let you guys for just a second as I go into this nasty slime. We got ourselves a small little queen here. I just got trapped in this because I was smoking them out. And they got stuck. Um, are you still backing them up? Um, yeah. I was going to see if they took to that. Another tip to consider when you're cutting into a tree is cut in like a wedge because you want the inside to be more narrow than the outside, right? Because you got to pull that out. If you cut like this, then you, you can't get the actual piece of log out. So if you're trying to get to here and here, then just instead of cutting like this, come over here and cut like this. Go ahead and get the rest of this out of here. frame here. And we want the bees to stick around. We're going to want to stick around and take care of these baby bees here. Okay. 
she's on the frame. She's small, but her in here. All right, so guys, okay, so these bees are definitely on life support. I thought they had kind of lost the will to survive there for a bit, but after about um, 24 hours, they finally started to take a little bit of sugar water. I don't know, I guess maybe at first they were eating what they had stored up from me smoking them, I'm not exactly sure. Or they were just trying to get themselves cleaned off from all that slime and stuff they had to crawl through, but I'm really hoping this queen survives and that if, if, if they can keep her alive, I'll give them some more bees once it warms up. Um, but so basically what happened is, is I pulled these bees out of that log, like as the front was getting here and it, the temperatures dropped and it hasn't been above freezing since I pulled them out of the log. So I brought them inside um, even, uh, I've been giving them some heat, um, outside of their box just to kind of make it easier for them to regulate the temperature in there. It's a really small cluster. I gave them back their eggs and brood that it's really just a small patch of eggs and brood. They had more eggs and stuff that got slimed out. Um, I guess you saw that. I'm about to go edit the footage. So I'm kind of saying this before I've really seen the footage myself, but, uh, um, basically, I, I don't know if that brood survived, they kept it alive or whatever, but I put it in there just to kind of hopefully uh, give them kind of the will to keep carrying on. But uh, once it warms up, I'll and uh, I'll give them some more bees if I think they're going to make it. I don't uh, purchase bees, I'm not like against it or anything, but I just never have. I've never purchased any queens or bees or anything. So as far as like genetic diversity um i like you know getting queens from cutouts or catching uh, swarms and stuff like that and just kind of seeing what kind of bees i get out of it it's just interesting so these bees were making it um in that log on their own uh, when they had to take the limb down and uh, they had a bunch of uh, a bunch of stored honey they had a bunch of excess honey and from the looks of it uh, I'm, I'm sure some bees were killed or left or whatever, but they didn't have a super uh, large um, cluster. But they, uh, but they were raising brood, um, you know, this time of year. Um, they, they started, you know, making a small patch of brood uh, with a small cluster, and they were keeping them alive. There was young bees that I vacuumed up and uh, kind of all stages of larva. So I don't know, maybe these are good genetics that kind of, the bees that I want. I don't like to have uh, uh, super uh, labor intensive uh, genetics. Like I don't want bees that are just, you know, making brood a hundred percent of the time and just consuming a lot of resources that I have to really be on top of, make sure they're not going to starve out in the spring uh, in my area. So we'll see how it goes. Hopefully you guys en enjoyed the video. And uh, if you would like and subscribe, I would appreciate it. Hopefully you guys can hear the bees in there making noise. Probably just hear the cat purring. What are you doing? Why are you in my way? Huh? You want to go up to the schoolroom with me? Come on.